So hey everyone, today we're gonna talk about one of the most common questions that you guys are asking me and that is should you go to a university, buy some expensive online courses or should you just completely teach yourself? So how to become a designer, what's the best path here? And I think that as with everything in life, it depends. But to start, we need to go back in time a little bit. I started out doing web design back in 1998, which was uh, 22 years ago. So no YouTube, no blogs, no real source of information anywhere. And I had to basically learn from my own mistakes and from some other people that were also learning from their mistakes. So we didn't really have a choice. We had to experiment. We had to play around with stuff and see what happens, basically. UX as an industry didn't exist at the time. And many of the concepts that we now take for granted would be basically laughed at if you went to a developer and told them that instead of doing a visual design, you're gonna make a gray wireframe first. But lucky you, you don't really have that problem anymore because there is just an abundance of knowledge everywhere. And first of all, universities are now offering design classes or UX classes. There is a lot of online courses out there and there's a lot of free information as well. There are YouTube videos, blogs, medium posts and so on and so on. So there is just so much stuff that you can learn from. So which is the best way? Well, let's start with the university education because for a long time, for many, many decades, it's been considered that university education is that cornerstone of getting a great job. And I think that it's moving away from that right now and this is really changing. But I can tell you from my own personal experience, I've been studying at a university, I've been studying psychology of the internet, which basically was a lot of standard social psychology mixed with uh, a little bit of design and a little bit of understanding of what the users are doing. So kind of like the beginning of user experience. So it was just before the user experience as a term exploded about 12 years ago. And obviously they changed the names of the classes to match that because well it sells. So all the psychology classes were really good and I'm still using a lot of that knowledge to this day. But a lot of these design classes on the other hand were outdated before they even started. So in in some cases I realized that I know a lot more about a specific subject than the lecturer and it was really a pain to, to look at that. I even managed to, to hop in and uh, help teach one of the classes by giving more advanced concepts to the students instead of uh, the teacher. And that was 12 years ago. And right now the trends in the industry are moving even faster than then. So right now if uh, you want to be on top of the game and if you want to be teaching the most um, essential things that matter right now, uh, you need to be updating the curriculum every year. And obviously most teachers don't do that because it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and they also need to prepare themselves. So they try to glide on that same knowledge for two or three years. But by the time that you enter the class and let's say it's three years in, you're learning stuff that might be already obsolete. But the good thing about the university classes is all the contacts and all the friends that you're gonna get there. Obviously some of them will get a designer job at some company and they might even pull you into that company at some point. So it's really good to, to have those contacts. And also learning together is essential, especially if you're gonna be working in larger organizations where there is a culture of actually having brainstorming in larger groups of designers and researchers, then it's gonna be useful to actually do the class exercises in groups and learn to do teamwork in design. And then there are those online courses. And I think that especially with those, you need to be aware because a lot of that knowledge there, especially in those really, really expensive ones, like couple thousand dollar ones, you don't really know what these people are doing for a living. And if they're just teachers, like if they don't have a company that is actually actively working in the field of designing and building digital products, it may be so that they are just teaching you stuff by recycling someone else's knowledge and charging quite a lot for it. So it's good to be skeptical. But recently Google announced that they're gonna make a UX course that's gonna be $49 a month for six months. And I think that's a really good deal because they, as the company, they are teaching potential designers that are gonna work at Google. 
because they even said that it's gonna be enough to finish that course well you need to finish it well enough and show that you understand the concepts but if you finish it Google will hire you. So obviously they're not gonna teach you all the garbage filler stuff that a lot of the courses are adding to make the course larger. Uh, they're gonna teach you all the essential things that they as the company need you to do to make them more money basically. So you'll be learning things that will impact the bottom line of the company. And I think that's great. I think that's the best way to learn because you know even though their motives are half pure only, um, but you know at least that they're gonna teach you stuff that is really useful in the industry. And then there is the learning from the internet. Um, and while there is an abundance of knowledge out there, there is YouTube videos with pretty much everything in the industry covered. There are free courses, there are blog posts, medium articles, and many of them are really good quality. But it's really hard, especially when you're a junior designer or just starting out, it's really difficult to know which ones of them are good and which are bullshit. So it's a little bit more tricky, but as a supplementary way of learning, I think it's really great. So uh, if you're planning to take a university class or maybe that Google online class, you should still be reading and watching videos and learning from external sources because you need that broader view of things. You can't really focus on just one narrow thing that the classes are teaching you. You need to expand and you need to put in the time and the effort. And it's gonna be tough. I'm just telling you it right away. Uh, it's gonna be tough and it's not gonna be a walk in the park where you just take the class and then, well, one year later you get a great job and everything is fine. You need to be really ambitious and you need to be really dedicated to make it in this industry or to make it in any meaningful way to have a good salary and a good life. So learning from those external sources is gonna be necessary no matter what. And the main thing that I want you to focus on here is to have something that I actually mentioned many times in my previous video, to have a bullshit detector. So if you're listening to some mentor talking about design, you need to have the bullshit detector ready. Because uh, just because somebody is talking to a camera or talking at conferences or being a design celebrity on Twitter, doesn't really mean that they know what they're saying. And yeah, obviously you should question me as well, because that's the whole point. You need to be curious, but at the same time you need to be skeptical and you need to be taking everything with a grain of salt, because uh, people have also different motives for teaching you stuff. So it's important to, to be critical, to, be, to try to dissect the knowledge that you're getting and the best tool for that is good old logic because a lot of the stuff that we're doing is based on logic so if a mentor is telling you that you should make an app project this way and it doesn't really seem right to you you're looking at it and you're like well no it shouldn't really work like that then it's possible that you are right and they are wrong because really it's just a matter of logic and obviously the knowledge and the experience adds on top of that but if something just doesn't make sense, then it's quite possible that it just doesn't. And obviously I don't mean being critical just for the sake of being critical and questioning just about everything. You need to be critical, but you also need to be open-minded. And that takes a little while to get used to, but once you do, you'll be able to absorb the knowledge much quicker and to actually get the good knowledge instead of all the recycled garbage that is floating around the internet because there is a lot of good free stuff it's just a matter of finding out which parts are the good ones and we're gonna try to help you with that a little bit so we're launching a new website called digital design talks which is gonna be short interviews with really really good designers so they'll be sharing their knowledge and their experiences in a very short easy to digest form some of the questions include whether you were self-taught or did you go to university so you can find out how many of them took which path and also what would they tell themselves right now if they were just starting out as a designer. So a lot of useful information and we're gonna be growing this website and adding new people. And if you have any ideas of questions that you'd like us to ask those designers, just add them in the comments here and uh, we'll consider them for the next interview. The plan is to add one more person weekly or bi-weekly, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and see you next time. Cheers.